I created an animated story video using AI tools. It's a little over 30 seconds long. Take a look and then I'll show you how I did it. A human only delivery going to the year 2025. Guess I better get moving. Traffic got a little dicey near the continuum and might have caused some destabilization, so I wouldn't open this near your Wi-Fi, unless you like fireworks. OC9 to dispatch, delivery to 2025 complete, I'm headed back to base. Now there were nine video clips in there, all generated with Sora 2 or Veo 3.1, all using starting frame images. And I created all of those starting frame images and the video clips on Design, who's sponsoring this video. There's a link to Design in the description so you can check it out. After making an outline of the story and figuring out roughly what the scene should be, I wanted to go ahead and create starting frame images for each scene. Since I knew I was going to have the same character in a couple of scenes, I went ahead and created an image of him first, then I'd have that to use as a reference image when creating the scene images and try and keep him consistent. This is my character image and I use the C-Dream 4.0 model on Design to create it. Just go into Design, click on New Project, everything inside Design is organized into projects. You can name your project, select an aspect ratio, and click Apply. Then over on the left, click Text to Image. Up at the top, click to select a model. Design has a ton of image generation models to choose from. Click the model we want to use. Here in the prompt box, describe the image that you want. I'll just paste in the prompt to use to create that character. With a long and detailed prompt like this, it's probably best to go ahead and turn off the prompt improver. The options for image generation will vary based on what model you have selected. For C-Dream 4.0, we can select output quality between 2K and 4K, and then the aspect ratio, which will switch to 16 by 9. Then click Generate. We can close out this left panel. Our generated image shows up over on the right under the Results tab, and if we double click on it, it'll put it on the canvas. This one came out real similar to my original character that I created, and I noticed that this logo on his chest was something I thought I might want to carry through to other images, and I wasn't sure if I could get it close enough with just a text prompt, so I used Design's chat editor to isolate that logo so that I'd have it as a reference for use in other scene images. The prompt I used was really short and simple. I'm surprised that even worked. I just said take the logo from the man's chest, the blue hexagon with the white ring inside. The chat editor has other models. I use C-Dream 4.0 for most of this project, but I use Nano Banana for this one, so we'll try that again and click Generate. Our new image is over on the right under the Results tab. This time it's turned on a different side and it has kind of a 3D metallic look to it. If that wouldn't work, we could rerun it by clicking the arrow rerun button up here, or better yet, would probably be to come down to this prompt and make some changes. Like I said, I'm surprised this thing worked the first time. Maybe add something like flat icon or vector style to try and get that result that I managed to get lucky with the first time. With those assets created, it was time to create the first frame of the first scene, which was going to be an establishing shot showing the exterior of the Orbitex Courier building in the year 2175. I wanted that logo on the building, and fortunately it was simple enough that the model produced it from the text description, and I didn't have to use that isolated logo image that I created as a reference. I just used text to image to create this starting frame image for the scene. This shot was good, but I wanted it to be a little bit wider, so I took it into the chat editor and had it create one where it was zoomed out a little bit. For the next scene, I used the chat editor, giving it the reference image of my character and the isolated logo. It might have been able to get that off of his uniform, but I used the reference anyway. I gave it some really detailed text and whatnot to incorporate in this scene, and it got it. The next scene would have the character walking toward one of those futuristic vehicles with a package in hand. So using the chat editor, I gave it my character image, and I cropped in the image of the exterior shot from that first scene and told it to have the guy carrying a box toward the vehicle. I used the same cropped exterior shot as a reference using chat editor to isolate one of the silver vehicles and have it flying in the sky. My first crack at that had the vehicle facing the camera, which the video models really didn't like. They kept making it fly backward, so I ended up taking that new image of the silver vehicle in the sky back into the chat editor and having it turn the vehicle around. Next up was the instrument panel in the vehicle. This was probably the most difficult image to generate. It insisted on having a windshield shield, a big bright exterior view of the street, and a bunch of other stuff that would be okay for a normal plane or helicopter, but mine clearly doesn't have a windshield. The issue seems to be that words like aircraft or cockpit make the AI want to do what it knows, and apparently that always includes being able to see out. 
who knew. The next scene is another exterior view of the vehicle flying. I didn't want to use the exact same starting frame of the isolated vehicle that I used for the other scene, so I used it as a reference with the chat editor and changed the perspective. The next scene would be the character delivering the package, so I used the chat editor with the character image as a reference, and I wanted that one to be like we're seeing him through a ring doorbell, but I couldn't quite get that to work out. It wanted to add extra doorbell cameras everywhere, or make weird doors or portals or whatever, so I just cropped it all out and made it like we're seeing it through the eyes of the person receiving the delivery. Next up was the return trip. I just used the reference image of the isolated vehicle and told it to change the view beneath the silver pod-shaped vehicle. To create the video clips for each scene, I went into my project in design, and then right under the image, click AI video. That opens this panel on the left and loads the image in as the starting frame. Here in the prompt box, describe what's supposed to happen in the scene, along with any camera motion, audio, or speech. Below that is the video model selection. Design has a bunch of AI video models to choose from. For this video, I use Sora 2 and VO 3.1. Design has the regular Sora 2 and the Sora 2 Pro, and they've also got VO 3.1 and VO 3.1 Fast. And I'm pretty sure I ended up using all four of these flavors in my video. Depending on the model you choose, you might have options for the resolution and the duration. Some of these variations are fixed, like VO 3.1, eight seconds is your only option for duration. With VO 3.1 and 3.1 Fast, built-in sound is optional. It's turned off by default. Alt, click this little speaker button to turn that on. Now with the Sora models, built-in sound is automatic. It's just always turned on. Now with both of these models, the audio can be background noise, sound effects. You can have your character say something. You can even give it a script and tell it to have your character say something specific. That's what I did with the scenes where the character is talking and on camera. Speaking of those scenes, the one where he receives the dispatch and says he needs to get going, and then the one where he's delivering the package and talking to the customer, I ended up taking both of those videos, the ones generated by Sora 2, and 3.1 and running those through Design's AI lip sync tool. I did that to try for better lip sync quality and because when you generate video with built-in audio in Sora 2 or VO 3.1, you can't specify the exact voice that you want to use, so the character could sound very different from one clip to another. Here's the original VO 3.1 output of him receiving the dispatch, followed by the Sora 2 output of him making the delivery. A human-only delivery going to the year 2025. Guess I better get moving. Traffic got a little dicey through the continuum and might have caused some destabilization, so I wouldn't open that near your Wi-Fi. Unless you like fireworks. The audio quality in that second clip is pretty rough, and of course it doesn't sound like the same guy. Back in our design project, underneath the video, click the lip sync button. It identifies the face in the video. If that's good, click select, and then click next. Now down on the timeline, click pick a voice. You can do text to speech in design. Just pick the voice that you want to use and type or paste your script here in the box, and then click generate audio. Or if you have your own audio, click the upload audio tab, drag and drop your audio file. Now you've got your video on the top track and your audio on the bottom track. You can trim up this audio track if you need to and move it around if you like. Then on the top left, choose a mode, either normal mode or pro mode. Pro is the one I always use. With pro, you can choose between 720p or 1080p, then click generate. Now with the lip sync tool in this scene where he's getting the dispatch, I did end up with some garbled text in this one spot. Not all the text, just the text that wasn't there in the starting frame. I was gonna figure out how to get my good text for that little spot from VO3 3.1 and try to do some masking or something until I noticed that it wasn't right in that version either. So I figured the completely weird one's better. After all, it's 2175. Maybe that's the future version of emojis or something. Another design tool I used for this project was the upscale video tool, and I used that on that very first scene, the establishing shot. I originally ran that at 720p, trying to conserve some credits, but the way it came out just seemed a little fuzzy. So back into my project in design, underneath the video, you see there it says 720p. Just click video upscale. Then we can pick a resolution, 1080p, 4K, or 8K. I went with 1080p. Once I generated all the AI video clips, I took it into a video editor to assemble and put everything together. I used CapCut for this project, but you could use any video editor. I want to show you what I did and how I did it so they're not hiding anything or leaving something out. Now for some of these scenes, I had two or three different versions of the video clip, either because I was trying different models or because the first generation, I wasn't quite sure if it was gonna work. So I just stacked those on different tracks on my timeline and then kind of played through one at a time and then picked the one that I liked best and put it on the top track. 
For some of these scenes, I changed the speed. For some, I trimmed them up a little bit, cutting off either the beginning or the end of whatever came out of Sora or VO 3.1. I also added this little text overlay at the beginning here in CapCut after I realized the current year wasn't staying on screen very long in that second scene, and that's kind of an important detail to know for this story. I added some transitions here in CapCut between a few of the scenes, and I added this animation here at the end. On the instrument panel scene, once I had it in here, I decided to add a shake effect. I also I ended up taking a piece of a clip that I created for the first flight but didn't end up using and instead used it to extend the return flight scene at the end. The built-in audio from Sora 2 and VO 3.1 like the sound effects and ambient noise it was generally pretty good but I did add some stuff myself like the ambient sounds when he's on the porch delivering the package and a few others. And in a few places I just took audio from clips that I wasn't going to use and repurposed that audio in other places. Now for the speech at the end when he says he's finished the delivery and returning since he wasn't on screen I didn't need to lip sync that or even have the video model generated. So I created that audio in the same voice I used for his other lines and then added it here in CapCut. Then I used the voice changer and went with military radio to give it that radio sound but still be the same voice. I used the video editor for final assembly and a little bit of polish but the bulk of this project was done in design with the AI image generation, image editing, video generation, lip sync generation, and the video upscaling. Design has all those tools and more. There's a link in the description so you can check it out. Design project Pricing starts at free. To do AI video generation, you'll need to be on the creator or master plan. Creator is $19.99 a month or $16 a month if you pay annually. That includes 3,000 fast image credits. If you're paying annually, they bump that up to 4,000 fast image credits. Unlimited regular image credits, 3,000 video credits a month, and access to all the tools like the AI image, AI video, including lip sync and multi-character lip sync, the chat editor, consistent character, and so on. Now, I'm sure you want to see my animated story video masterpiece again now that you've seen how it was all put together so I'll let that play us out but first my name is Bob thanks for hanging out with me a human only delivery going to the year 2025 guess I better get moving Traffic got a little dicey near the continuum and might have caused some destabilization, so I wouldn't open this near your Wi-Fi, unless you like fireworks. OC9 to dispatch, delivery to 2025 complete, I'm headed back to base. <laughs> 